You guys ready? Let's talk about Hellboy. You might have noticed him from the movies, but today I'm going to be going over his comic book lore, aka where the movies are getting the inspiration from. But before I go any farther, quick shout out to those that have donated to the channel. It really helps out a whole lot. It's about to get real because he has three different modes, but that's none of my business. But his real name is, I'm not even going to try to say that, so I'll put it on the screen for you so I don't have to deal with grammar Nazis because that does get annoying. And by the way, he is a part demon. So yeah, the name Hellboy does fit. You got some lore in the comics right here. It says his father was a prince. Then it says here, this, I renounce the devil and all his works and pray God forgive me all the sins of my former life. Mother, a witch, he was delivered into hell but born again on earth. Yep. And he's also a paranormal investigator, aka investigating supernatural stuff pretty, pretty much fits his whole forte right states here hellboy renowned occult investigator field agent for the bureau for paranormal research and defense since 1952 i'm gonna get back to this later on but like his different modes yeah the true demon mode he gets real big but yeah i'm gonna get to that in a second <laughs> he has a fate to bring apocalypse the ragnarok to the planet this guy known as gregory rasputin hopefully i'm saying that right no grammar nazis please summoned hellboy to earth on december 23rd in the 1940s as a part of the plan to end the world it states here the demon come from hell to destroy all of us but luckily the government got to him first he was raised by this guy named trevor oh look look at the pancakes this is cool and that's how he became into paranormal research and defense and that's how that happened in 1952 however in more recent years more and more about his destiny kept being revealed bit by bit and he confronted various magical forces. Hellboy didn't even like his freaking destiny. Literally rejected his destiny and his role in the apocalypse. He wanted to forge a new destiny, continuing to fight magical forces that wanted to control him for the wrong purposes. You know, bringing the end to mankind. He was successful to some degree in preventing the destruction of humankind. And let's get into his strength and stuff. But hold on a second. Let me get into some of his lore a little bit more before I get into that stuff right fast. Just in case it's not obvious enough for you, straight up stated, I'm tougher and stronger than any human. That makes sense. He's a demon, right? Have you ever wondered why his right hand looks so chunky and thick? He wields the right hand of doom, probably one of his deadliest weapons. It's like probably one of the most durable parts on his body. It's literally an angelic artifact. It can be used to command the armies of hell and unleash apocalypse. Yeah, it's kind of important. That's why it looks like that. Just imagine having legion of demons at your disposal and they just follow your lead no matter what, right? That's kind of scary. And let's be honest, it helps to increase his striking power being able to hit like a sledgehammer or even better than a sledgehammer whatever you got i've seen worse He literally learned that he is the heir to the throne of King Arthur. That can potentially mean that he could command the armies of the dead of England. And you already know about the story of King Arthur. The Excalibur states here, rightful king of Britain. Isn't that crazy? And yes, he did gain Excalibur for a short amount of time. And in pretty much any universe, the Excalibur is a big deal. The story goes on like this. This is one of the few times I'm going to read it out for you. I usually don't read all this out for you, but this is kind of interesting lore. The two met at the Battle of where they killed each other, it's commonly believed that the Pendragon line ended there, but it's not true. Mordred had three sons by a witch named Catherine of Gilfatch. Few of Arthur's knights who survived knew this, tracked the boys down and put them to death. But there was also a daughter they did not find. She grew up in hiding and eventually had a daughter of her own. And that daughter had a daughter and that daughter a daughter and so on. So the Pendragon name was lost. But the royal bloodline continued hidden behind other names dale hamilton talbot and unbroken line of witches so hellboy has some pretty good genetics one could say your mother what are you saying she had three children but only one still lives wouldn't that make you don't say it the first male descendant of mordred son of arthur rightful king of britain you are your father's son but you also had a mother either way you are bound to wear a crown you feel it draw out that sword and your army will come see that's some interesting lore for hellboy it's even implied that he's supposedly what, quote unquote, deathless until he's supposedly ready to die, they say. He states here, he's not ready. 
or one could say he dies after he's fulfilled his destiny, which he doesn't want to do. <laughs> he actually has some standard gear, like his trusty old pistol, handgun, depending on how you look at it. He uses this to hunt down things, shoot. There was even implied one time he used silver bullets, all the supernatural things he has to fight. There's no surprise there. Think of Hellboy like Android 17 from Dragon Ball Z. He has the pistol, but he doesn't necessarily need it because one could say he could punch or strike harder than what the pistol can even produce. And sometimes it's even useless in certain situations. So he, he'd rather just punch him anyway. And yes, he carries various artifacts Effects, paranormal equipment, etc., charms, just a lot of stuff to fight a lot of different supernatural foes. It's a silver button from the coat of Bishop. Here we go. Cornelius Agrabah's charm against demonic animals. Yes, he has iron. He has an artifact known as the Arbiter. They hate this, they say. Smoke from this stuff will drive it crazy. It even states down here, Arbitus, used by ancient Greeks and Romans to chase away evil and protect small children. It's implied right here that he collects a lot of different artifacts and charms and puts them in his coat all from all the four corners of the world. He even has holy water. He states, why don't I carry a holy water pistol? Yes, he carries explosives as well. His Vulcan 50 grenade can cause like a big explosion like that to that degree. I've already went over the right hand of doom. He fights creatures way bigger than him, as you can see. He also uses them to block attacks. Like I said, that's probably the most durable part on his body destroy enemies weapons like very durable breaking sword you get a, an idea of his strength like he's locked up in chains he can rip them apart here's a better idea of how the bindings look he still broke out and look at this large rock he pushed over you can tell it's like way bigger than him look at this big old monster he held the jaws open here's a view of how the monster looked in like pure size way larger than a normal human lifts up all this chunk of rubble crushes folk like that punching power as well this big creature like this large paw they look like this thing has to be a couple hundreds of tons and he's able to hold it off from getting crushed thick wood imposed he just shatters it look look at that raw strength usually just breaking through something that's sealed with a spell just doesn't work he breaks this door sealed with a spell off the literal hinges it literally states up here the holes are too small for the orphan to me to use there's also a faint aura a minor sealing spell he's literally strong enough to uh, crush a skull right hand of doom squeezing feet through this harpoon through a monster and a ship mast the super strong gorilla robot hand he just breaks it consistently punching things larger than him like this little small building size thing right here punches it yet another occasion of his striking punching it yet yeah, things are not small raw punching power punching through brick stuff punching montage another punch the raw power he can produce with a headbutt look at this thing trying to do a bear hug on him doesn't matter punches that thing punches that thing shatters it open being falls out and punches that upward cracks the ground punches this through the wall more creatures gets punched night freaking night he was able to throw this log, log or branch he threw this same log into like this giant small building sized creature's neck tell me that strength ain't beast he's able to kick down huge stone columns like breaks them apart with the kick not just tilting it over like to two pieces with it he can literally break these large rocks a large tree monster look at that force i showed this a little bit earlier but he was actually able to block this giant sword also he was able to break the sword with the right hand of doom blocking it and breaking it at the same time with the strike punching power then picked up this large sword shard to slice through creatures even more slice slice if i was a betting man just off of this stuff alone i would say he can strike with over hundreds of tons of force or can lift over 100 of tons of force the way he's handling these creatures like in his base state literally was able to throw a tree hard enough to go through a giant creature you know lowballing the snot out of this feet right here for him to be able to throw it that hard not saying this feat is his limit but this feat alone should automatically put him into 10,000 pounds of lifting strength to be able to hit it that hard to be able to pierce this giant creature not to mention overpowering this giant being that are bigger than him then if you want to talk about how hard can he punch me and you included can hit harder than what we can live hellboy is pretty much proven that he can hit harder than what he can live and we already saw the bare minimum of what he can live not to mention we got a feat to kind of prove it even more which feat am i talking about I'm talking about this feat of him punching through this large tree monster this feat alone in my opinion pretty much confirms that he could probably punch down a building level a building or punch through something that's supporting a building just from this feat alone this is a massively sized creature but this is, isn't even in his limits this is all in his base state so far i wouldn't say he's slow on his feet either just like literally look how close the mouth looks to this little girl he's pretty quick on his feet because he intercepts it at the last second i think it's safe to say that if you try to sprint away from him he can just walk you down it's kind of like a period in front of him <laughs> get murked 
sliced the octobi into pieces. Kind of shows like his swinging speed, you know, just some little minor things. Could be like a panel skip thing, but you know. Notice how he's sitting right here in this one panel. He grabs a spear and then just stabs this guy that's really quick. React to things that are swarming around him, flying around him in a hard motion. He caught an escaped demon that was literally in fly form. Like a small behind fly, he catches it. Bruh be sprinting. Like he pursues this vampire falling all the way underground. Now, when it comes to being able to react in a moment's notice, little slight work. Like you see these little darts, he blocks it with the hand of doom. This sudden attack that out of nowhere reacts quick to loop a line around the creature's neck. That's pretty quick thinking. These undead warriors, like literally he's sitting there chilling. They they pop up in there, dodges attack, actually has the time to disarm him in the process. Then punch back. Literal flying punch. He avoids it. Combat skills. Frog monsters attack. He avoids it and throws it. Surprise attack from a super gorilla. Punches him in the process. Dodges a sword strike. Hey, you like his horns. You know you like it. Punch. He was able to dodge an attack from getting shot by a ray gun. Ray gun. Wait a minute. Aren't lasers like light speed? Oh, you know what? I'm not going to try to do that. But uh, hey, that's pretty quick reflex feat right there, right? So I'm just a messenger. But I'm not trying to overhype nobody. But usually lasers are light speed. But that's none of my business, though. Now, when it comes to how much he can take, I mean, he can already dish out a lot of force and power. But he can take a lot. He's one of those hill lord type of people. I mean, he fought this being prince under the hill. Blunt attacks, no problem. He can take attacks from beings that can hit similar to him, I guess, right? We got sent flying here in this one battle feat smashes into a stone bridge here's an idea of how big the enemy that hits him is you know he fights creatures this big all the time <laughs> i keep on showing this but i'm gonna go ahead and show it in a more extended fashion he fights this colossus this thing is very freaking big that's the part where i showed you him throwing that tree through him battle feet can endure attacks from him but they, that does harm hell boy you know what i'm saying but he's still good afterward i would say as big as this thing is it has to weigh a couple several hundred tons I mean, it's big enough to hold Hellboy in his hand. This Iron Maiden, like, literally chewed Hellboy. Like, look how big this thing is. Like, look at that. Goes through him. Now, I think there's a difference between durability and endurance. He definitely has a lot of endurance because he because of his regenerative factors, because of his whole deathlessness type stuff. Like, he can't really die if he hasn't fulfilled his destiny or stuff like that. He could be just resurrecting over and over again. You know what I mean? He seems fine after going through, like, a little dark phase like where am i behold the pit it seems that regular bullets don't do too much to him like endures bullets endure like this big explosion literally got chewed by a hydra yeah but he seems okay so it does seem like he does have a speed healing type of quality even though they don't really highlight it as much as they should he even goes as far as saying that wasn't too bad <laughs> battle feet one can say he could be actually dying from these attacks like getting pierced or chewed up the teeth going through his body it could be just him returning from death over and over again kind of like the green door situation with the hulk hellboy does indeed have a lot of elements like hell lord type characters so it kind of makes a little bit sense so there was this rocket pack explosion and he was falling like that big of an explosion like long fall boom ouch but he seems ready to scrap right after it, so durability, immune to fire, <laughs> he's Hellboy, resisting fire on this occasion, seems to can't be really burnt up, all that, yeah, plenty of occasions, yep, he can get shocked with enough volts to light up, they say Hamburg, so electricity resistance as well, I mean, this dude is fought in all kinds of supernatural stuff, even ghost possessing Japanese toys, what in the actual heck is happening guys he's in very close proximity with his grenade and he's good literally recovers i mean this guy doesn't have the best luck i mean his gun literally blew up in his hand like it's bleeding but at the same time it's like okay these type of energies looks like electricity in this occasion punches the head off raw power durability endurance pain tolerance it's implied that hellboy like got like literally penetrated and pierced and literally died but due to his nature, like his deathlessness, like he can't die unless his destiny is fulfilled. He states here, oh crap, am I dead? Do you think you are? Maybe. Are you ready for it to be over? No, not yet. Then you should live. As simple as that. This is what I'm talking about where he kind of reminds me on some resurrection type stuff. This is kind of like the ultimate proof of this. This kind of reminds me of the current Hulk comics, how the Hulk can die, but he can literally choose to stay dead or resurrect through the green door like another dimension. He has control over his life and death. That's kind of what... Hellboy seems to be implying he can do here, having the choice to come back if he wants to. And after getting killed, he's able to resurrect and like fight, implied to be completely healed after this monster. I showed a little bit of this earlier, but I didn't show him actually dying. Hellboy is not invincible and he has taken several L's in his base state. Like this one time he got pierced here, fell unconscious. He does wake up later with no life-threatening wounds and you see the pierce is like literally through him still. So all it did was like really knock him out really. Hellboy is constantly fighting creatures or things that are on his level though. You can't even lie. Even some that get the W over him or overcome him in a long fight. 
All right, so check this out. Hellboy fought these giants, right? I showed this already, but I'm going to show it in a little bit more of an extended fight. Six of these giants, right? Bigger than him, right? I would definitely think this concretes all the evidence I have. Shoots him right there, dodging attacks. Part of this skill has to come into play because these beings are just ridiculously strong. This based on their sheer size. Alone, this is why I showed you earlier, blocking that sword right there, slicing and dicing. He seems like he like powered up to another form to be able to overcome this. And then they show like a glimpse of Excalibur. Do you see the size of them compared to him? He's literally standing all over them. Like imagine playing an action adventure game, you just got to fight a load of minions. That's basically what he did, fighting his way through a horde of different things, like literally a mob of them. Like, wiping them all out. Look at all these floors of them just giving the works to them. I mean, he was able to target a super gorilla's nerve junction. That kind of shows skill under his big jaw. That one time he figured out the enemy's weakness, then he quickly figured out a way to destroy it. Like, this creature already brought up already. Hey, he's like, he weaponizes stuff. Like, weaponizing the environment to use it against the weapons. Slice. When it comes to his gun accuracy, I wouldn't necessarily say he's dead shot level. But he can hit moving target, if that makes some sense. See what I'm saying? Hit. Head shot, 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 shoots again. And this guy threw a projectile into a super gorilla's mouth. One of Hellboy's notable fights fighting this being known as Nimui, however you say the name, because no grammar Nazis, please. Being that's pretty powerful, that can even change size. They went at it for a very long panel. It was a queen empowered by destructive entities. You can get an idea of the power just from their size comparison here. This fight was a war. Heck, there was even parts where Hellboy was pinned down. See all this collateral going on? Like, I look at them build a lightning strike. He on the ground like that, uses a dagger, fight gets extended a little more. It was a war. But I gotta agree, it was very entertaining though. Hellboy even got the advantage over a creature empowered by Nimui, holding his ground, reacting in combat, in all that glory and supernatural type of gets pierced through the chest. It's okay after that because of a regenerative healing factor. Or the fact that he doesn't die unless he wants to die. Or via resurrection. One could say. I showed you this earlier. He gets the advantage over a deathless. A.K.A. an immortal warrior in combat. But now I'm just showing you him straight up getting the W over him. Because Hellboy is just a beast like that. Oh yeah, you already know he has significant paranormal knowledge and experience. It states here that's the symbol of Knights of St. Hagen. He seems to know everything that's going on. Malach was one of the old Middle Eastern god monsters. He's actually mentioned in the Bible a couple of times. He states here his fathers used to sacrifice children to him. They used to build a fire inside a big brass idol and roast the kids in his hand. Yeah, that's dark. Yeah. You're probably thinking, but Ivan, why haven't you shown no feats in his other forms? Well, I technically did. He just doesn't have that many. But even those little bit of scans of what his full potential will be like because he's trying to not be that stuff right so his full potential is way higher than what i've already showed you he just doesn't want to be on that dark side that dark path you know he wants to do good right you basically got his base form as you can see right here is which majority of his feet run is you can kind of get an idea of how strong his other form is based off the bare minimum this form is right you know other forms like his demon form and what his destiny is to become like the prince of hell and stuff like that like his true potential how deadly would he actually be well, for one, in his demon form, he can produce like hellfire for once. Like I'm talking about this form right here. Like he has literal fire projection. Hellboy is implied to be like larger than life, way bigger than before and produce a lot of hellfire. And as you can see, it looks like there's even mountains, even though it's not the best art. It looks like he's the size of mountains. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? If that makes any sense, it's just the art is just really bad to really get a good scale on it. Since I'm not a calculation expert, I actually went over to Versus Battle Wiki to see what type of calculation do they have for Hellboy's strength. And they go by his weight. They concluded, and even I agree, based on my own research, that he can lift over 70 million tons in this new Hellfire state. He's got like mountain size type of size. And he can more than likely hit harder than what he can lift. This kind of does make a lot of sense considering how tall he actually was. When you Google, this is what I found on Google. It states here, 2,000 feet has to be at least that amount to be considered a mountain. You know, just random Google. Hellboy was this big, at least over 70 million tons to be this massive as a low ball. I mean, just look at this freaking crap, yo. Go to YouTube and type in fight science and you can see how hard normal humans can hit, right? Most of them can hit like triple the amount of what they weigh, right? This guy, for example, weighs under 200 pounds, but look how hard he can hit though. 612 pounds of force. So if Hellboy can literally weigh this much, we know he has to have a bare minimum of lifting strength of 70 million tons because he has to at least weigh this amount, right? Imagine how hard he can actually punch, like triple this, like he can punch with 
140 million tons of force. 210 million tons of force. It's just like, whoa, but what do you think? But he's never hardly in this form because he doesn't want to, you know, become the king of hell and stuff. But for the sake of low balling, let me just say it like this. At least in his demon form, with his highest potential, way beyond his normal levels of power, he can punch with 70 million tons of force. At least it could be more. Because guess what? He even has a form higher than this. You're probably like, what? You know, it's that destiny form, like what him becoming the prince of hell and stuff. I think it's safe to say whatever those other forms can do, this form can do better. Also, let me go back in time right fast before I give you the final conclusion of what I think about Hellboy based on all the information added together, extrapolated together. Even though I did use a versus battle wiki calculation, but please note, I don't take their word as Bible and I just use it for that particular calculation. Even without their calculation, I still agree on where he ranks either way, right? Like Hellboy literally survived an explosion this big of an entire base like base form. This is something that has to be considered. The durability he can withstand. He doesn't have the most flashy speed showings, but just being realistic, I, I would say he at least has supersonic reflexes. If a bullet was to fly towards him, he would be able to react to it while it's in flight. You know, that's fair enough, right? Nothing extraordinary, but it could be better. It just might not be that many showings of it. You know what I mean? He's resistance to all kinds of things, even being able to break out of illusions, all kinds of languages he can speak. He can speak old Lemurian. There's a lot of skills. Defeating a professional wrestler, like in a little ring. His right hand of doom is Haxy, like on some supernatural stuff, he can actually hit ghosts. But that's completely intangible for my existence. Yeah, I brought this up earlier. The amount of electricity to it stated it can light up a city, basically. That's early when I mentioned Hamburg. It's obvious he can communicate with the dead. Little stuff I didn't show that I should have shown earlier. Don't you love his size manipulation? Just ginormous. I think it goes like this when it comes to punching power, lifting power, things like that. You know what I mean? In his base form, I say Hellboy can hit with at least over hundreds of tons of force. All the major feats of the video, basically. But then he can jump up or skyrocket at least to that 70 million ton range thanks to sheer size scaling alone. Like, not too many feats to base it off of. And then his destiny form, like what he's destined to be, is literally what all these forms can do, but better. Along with Hellfire Projection, all that good stuff. Anything those forms can do, it can do better. It's like his form of Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2. <laughs> For Saiyans, right? His demon form should be able to just level small mountains if we're being honest. Just small ones, not necessarily saying large mountains because there's a large gap between small mountains and big mountains. You know, that confusing stuff. But his ultimate form, like you see his ultimate form, like how small buildings look in comparison to them. Stuff like that. If you are a fire user, you might not want to fight him because if that's the only thing you got against him, it more than likely isn't going to work. But what do you guys think? Post your comments down below. Let me know what you all think. That's just about going to do it. Did you guys know Hellboy was this strong? Did you know he can like level buildings in his base state? Fight all these building sized creatures and give them the, give them the hands pretty much? Mystical creatures has a whole bunch of gear that can stop hexy type stuff or counter different creature that he fights or comes across. He's very knowledgeable on the supernatural stuff. If he was in DC, he would probably be hanging out with characters like Constantine and stuff like that, right? Too bad his demon form and other forms don't have many occurrences or showings because, you know, that's what he's trying to avoid. It would be cool to see more of that stuff. Did you know he was that freaking big? Like, on some mountain-sized or multi-building -built size type stuff? And the crazy part is he more than likely can hit harder than what his actual size is. So, ba me basically estimating him to be 70 million tons is just me assuming he can only punch with the force of what his weight is. Let's be honest, most people can hit harder than what they can lift. So he more than likely hit can hit harder than 70 million tons of force, right? But I'm lowballing it for the video. But what do you guys think? Post your comments down below and let me know what y'all think. And then he got that one formal higher than that, Prince of Hell. You know, his actual destiny type form. That's better than all that stuff <laughs> that I already showed you. Whatever those other forms can do, that form can do better. You know what I mean? Just like Super Saiyan Blue can do anything a Super Saiyan 1 can do, but better. Right? You know what I'm saying? Post them comments down below. Let me know what you all think. I will see you guys later. I'm glad I was able to do this video. It was a nightmare to make. A lot of stuff to go over. A lot of brain thinking and analyzing. But it's worth it for you guys. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys later. And check out those doggone playlists so you can see more stuff like this. Hell boy. Respect them.